हेलो नमस्कार आदाब सत्यकाल कस काय केडो वाला है केम छो वेलकम टू स्पॉटलाइट विद आभा एंड आई एम योर होस्ट आभा जाधव फ्रेंड्स टुडे वी हैव एन एमिनेंट एजुकेटर इन दिस शो हु हैज मेड एन इनवैल्यूएबल कंट्रीब्यूशन टुवर्ड्स द फील्ड ऑफ एजुकेशन इन नेशनल एंड इंटरनेशनल लेवल्स एंड आल्सो बीइंग अ ग्लोबल चेंज मेकर लेट्स ऑल वेलकम मिस सोनाली सिन्हा रॉय from Turkey welcome sonali ji into the spotlight uh good afternoon because here in turkey it's good afternoon and good evening in india it's nice to be a part of this talk show with you abha ji uh it's a pleasure that i will be sharing some of my thoughts or experience which i have gathered throughout my life wow. thank you but before we dive into the round of question answers let me give my viewers a brief introduction about you miss sonali ji so friends miss sonali sinha roy is recipient of global educational award 2020 best academician outstanding global coach and mentor award 2019 Platinum Linus Award 2018, Women with Global Reach winner of Global Women Winner Click Mothers Week 2020, Mrs. Raffles Campus 2008 Singapore, Best Team Teacher of the Year 2011 Kazakhstan, Miss Sonali is a Global Goodwill Ambassador Lead Person in Turkey for the Year 2020, Global Goodwill Ambassador Lead Person in China in 2018. UN volunteer since 2018 and an honorary lifetime member of All Ladies League and World Women Economic Forum. She has played a vital role as a coordinator, mentor advisor and teacher for various countries like India, Maldives, Singapore, Malaysia, Indonesia, Kazakhstan, China and Turkey. She has also been the director of Model United Nations in Kazakhstan, China and Turkey and a jury member for Global Teacher Award 2020 by CED Foundation. Ms Sonali is also a motivational and educational speaker in international national conferences and motivated thousands of people across the globe in various summits. As an economic examiner, team leader World IBO team leader for IB Diploma Economic Examination 2008 onwards in Kazakhstan, Nazarbayev Intellectual School, Maldives, Maldives Higher Education Ministry of Education, member of national and international organization, Global Goodwill Ambassador, UN volunteer, and Bumi NGO Women Economic Forum (WEF) honorary life member of All Ladies League Global Top Education. in and india global women partnership uh, women partner team miss sonali this is really incredible the more i read about you the more i get amazed what all things you have done in so uh, in education field and empowering ladies empowering women so miss sonali i would like you to share the beginning of your career journey how it started um the beginning of my career if you look into it was like early marriage early pregnancy early childbirth <laughs> early family responsibilities and then that is the reason um i had to balance between family and education it was a hard job but still didn't give up I'm a person who so easily doesn't give up anything. For me, in my dictionary, there is no word called impossible. So I try to make my students also follow the same. And my mother was my moral and financial support during that time. Uh, father was also backed my mother's decision. my brother's wife habi also had a role to play because she was taking care of my child my only daughter and i used to go uh, to finish my studies you know i was um, i was going 
to the college uh, doing my uh, inter then degree and then masters staying in a hostel and that was the time when she was taking care of my baby so being a heart of teacher what do you think in present scenario when everything has gone online teachers need to upgrade on yes uh, definitely uh, the teachers have to be apt with different online teaching tools because first of all unless they know how to use it it will be difficult for them to pass on this information to the students very effectively so therefore uh, not only that they have to know about online teaching tools but they also have to be very creative in their teaching techniques they have to adapt new ways by which they can keep their uh, students more engaged more productive and make the class more interactive and interesting absolutely i truly agree with you so recently you have uh, spoken in world creative conclave 2021 and i have witnessed your flabbergasting presentation so kindly share your experience and something about the topic you spoke on ah uh, yeah recently i spoke on this world creative conclave 2021 actually i did know my name was there surprisingly you know i did know nobody contact me and suddenly i saw it <clears throat> on facebook and i was surprised how come my name is there my photo is there but my i don't know about it then i contact the person uh, dr sina and then he sent me the link and and i just joined in you know and i was not thinking of speaking i was just thinking to be a good listener because always i speak everywhere i go but sometimes i need to be like a student learning from others so i was just quiet in the beginning but later when i saw that everybody is sharing their ways how they are becoming more creative and the ways they are using in different fields i thought let me share my way and maybe it will be helpful to so many people those who are watching that conference that was the reason i just jumped in and i wrote to ms dr sina about it that if you can give me just 5 minutes to speak on it i am going to speak and then there goes um, because i am a person who can't keep quiet for a while <laughs> so the, my my topic was uh, on remote learning and how i have used a creative teaching technique uh, which made the students uh, more interested engaged and it was a part of their active learning they loved it uh, because i wanted to give more importance to what the students learn rather than what the teacher mainly knows about it because it's not any more confined to what teacher knows it is also how the teacher is able to pass on that information to the students in a better way or more understanding way uh, and i have seen uh, i i've shown some uh, ways how i made cooking as a part of my Uh, teaching time where the students have come up with wonderful results of the turkish cuisine like the food and i could combine uh, turkish culture as well as um, my economic concept because i am a economics facilitator uh, so and another thing i kept in mind is because it is online uh, students are just sitting in front of the laptop for such a long time which is not healthy for them 
so as you know we have to also keep in mind uh, their well being so i thought why not make them run get up from their chair run to the kitchen prepare things and they really enjoyed because after preparing the food they ate mm-hmm. and they shared their experience how it was they started comparing their cooking with their mother cooking and saying oh my god it's so difficult for a mother to cook for us because now we know now we understand so in that way not only that i taught my subject not only that i made it interesting but also at the same time i made them to respect mother the contribution that a mother provides to a child they should realize that you know that's completely an innovative way to teach children that what pain mother faces you know while uh, caring about them and while preparing food about them every little step a mother takes for a child i think this was uh, uh, this can be one of the method through which a child can understand how much pain a mother is taking in you know uh, doing little little things for them so great idea very nice so sonali ji you are also constantly working for women leadership can you share your endeavors in this field um working for women leadership mainly it is said that leaders are born not made right it has been said but uh, according to john quickey adams he says that if your action inspire others to dream more learn more do more and become more you are a leader awesome so i yeah so i am a natural born leader i know that because from childhood it is there within me however however i have sharpened it with time to make myself more effective because another thing i learned is the more you grow the more humble you become so the more humble you become the more approachable you become to your team members they can easily approach you um thinking yes it is so easy to speak to her so they will open up their heart and that is how i can help them out in bringing up the and make the weakness into strength you know and also as a global ambassador my work is to see that there is peace harmony brotherhood all over the world uh, so i not only pass this information through my teaching to my students but also that's the reason i speak in national and international conferences where um, where i have to speak about uh, well being or let it be yoga or meditation or it can be how to deal with uh, corona situation so all the different aspects of life uh, i take into account under my uh, this global goodwill ambassador role also not only that i also try to donate but i keep it as a secret because it is said that if you donate and you tell people it doesn't work you know people it is like a hidden kind act that i do which people um, which others should not know about it and also i adopted few children for their education wow and i truly agree with you that if any noble thing is done without making it promoted everywhere definitely that work that uh, whatever efforts we have put behind that noble cause actually gives fruitful results and that is the real you know sign of the real leader if uh, what there's no use if you are doing any kind thing and we are promoting everywhere okay humne ye kiya humne ye kiya so like there's no use of doing it yes i understand you i understand so hats off to you 
so as an educator what one thing you wish to change or add in the current education system in india okay i i i started my teaching from 1988 onwards and i started also teaching from uh, year 8 9 and 10 and then slowly i joined junior college and then i was teaching in uh, women's uh, college um, particularly in mehndi patnam which is known also as sentence mehndi patnam women's college where i taught not only undergraduates but also graduates so i have taught if you look into all the age group students not kindergarten that it's not my forte i think so i cannot manage that but uh, yes the high level uh, that is uh, high school uh, high secondary and university level i have taught uh, in india and after that the first assignment that i got was in maldives when i went to maldives i found the difference between the teaching in india and abroad and i be- and it became more clear to me when i started teaching ib international baccalaureate where the teaching method is not only based on the classroom you know class it is a classroom without any boundaries and mainly the things are practical oriented but in india there are good things also like we have constant exam check to see the strength and weakness of the students how they can improve and then also the competitive spirit they have because they have to compete with different uh, levels of examination but the problem is the rote learning and mainly they rely on textbooks no freedom to think that means creative thinking and critical thinking is missing and marks are the final thing like what marks they get based on that the students performance is judged whereas that is not the way how the students performance can be because at the end of the year if the student is sick we don't know their circumstances they may fall sick they may have some family issues and that will have an impact on the final exam so therefore i think that in india also we should have a continual assessment process which should be taken into account when you try to calculate the final grades so maybe because the final exam like in ibo there are 25% 30% as internal assessment and 75 to 80% is the final exam so at least the students are continuously judged not on the last moment or last minute and you decide whether the student is good or bad that has a very negative impact on the students and you have seen the the amount of suicide that has gone up in india due to this type of um, examination pattern i think um, indian government or the education minister should take into account this aspect and i am also able to see that slowly the things are changing slowly there is a change in the system but as in overnight it cannot change it will require some more time to see that it it takes into account the well-being of the student not only their assessment because they have become like a machine you know reading 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 every time no past time parents are judging what the student has to do that is another thing how can the parent decide what the student has to do it is the student's passion we have to keep in account the student passion what they want to be sometimes what happens parents know you have to be because in india we have a trend that the 
child should be um, a doctor or an engineer there's no third option for them but then what happens is the student or the child becomes so much enclosed like closed window doesn't want to open up afraid of parents because you know how the indian parents are so they are looking for the benefit of the student of their child but they at sometimes forget that they have to also consider the wish of the child also uh so i think so these are some of the things which has to be taken into account and make some drastic changes in indian education system absolutely uh, sonali ji i truly agree with uh, what you have said over here that in indian system education system rote learning was one of the main factor if i say children were just le- reading and learning everything but they were not uh, knowing anything they, they didn't gain anything on the knowledge part they were not able to apply the acquired knowledge in practical field so now the things are changing uh, gradually because uh, now the sets of teachers we are getting in school and uh, you know the way they are being trained by senior educators like you and uh, many more so teachers are also getting trained they know how to handle the child this now today at present education has not remained up to books now teachers are gradually understanding this and they have started uh, you know working on this and slowly slowly i am seeing that somewhere critical thinking and uh, creative thinking skills are being developed uh, you know in children through different methodologies so yes we are waiting for the huge change which will definitely uh, which will take a little time and hope this new education policy will definitely bring a big change so uh, so thank you so, so much sonali sinha roy for sharing your valuable insights on this platform and also devoting your valuable time to this platform it was really wonderful listening to you i want to say something also yes um that you know the like last moment i came to know that i i have been chosen as as the top most beautiful woman 2020 and uh, it is like 30 top most beautiful women award also wow. has been given to me awesome yes <laughs> yes great great so you know these achievements are all because of my passion for uh, teaching and passion for doing things out of my comfort zone also sometimes like i have started my youtube channel just 3 uh, weeks back and already i have got around uh, around 7k viewers wow great with this 3 weeks yes um, i have good connection with my uh, facebook friends my colleagues like you all you all also like it i would uh, take this opportunity to thank you abhaji for giving me this virtual platform to express my thoughts and feelings thank you thank you sonali ji friends if you wish to see other episodes of spotlight with dava do click to the playlist coming up on the screen do subscribe to my youtube channel for upcoming episodes of spotlight with dava and yes do press the bell icon right there with subscription button so that you get immediate notification of my latest videos so this is dava jadav signing off now do take very good care of yourself and your family members do wear mask do maintain social distancing corona has still not got over so please do take care of yourself you sanitizers keep washing your hands see you soon till then bye bye namaste jai hind